Welcome to another episode of 300 Guys. We're in downtown Raleigh, and we're doing a restaurant that was started by Quee, who came to America in 1982 as a refugee. Not a penny to his name. Fast forward 17 years ago, we actually opened Sushi Blues across the street. But being Vietnamese, he wanted to open something authentic that he could trace back to his roots and use family recipes. So last year, he opened a restaurant called Ba Ba Ba. And it's lots of great thoughts. So it's a great story. Today I have with me two food bloggers from the area. I have Lindsay of Welcome to Rollywood and Megan of Meg Here and There. And they're going to be our guests today. We're going to try a lot of great food and have some cocktails and have a good time. So with we, the owner here, and it's a really fun place. It's got, they show kung fu movies, the art is cool. He wanted a fun atmosphere. So tell us a bit, what was your inspiration? What, what made you decide to do another restaurant? And I've been at Glenwood Avenue since 1999, and I love, uh, kind of grew up with this, uh, this street. Love Raleigh. Uh, this place, we just want to have a place that people come, enjoy the food. We, our emphasis is on uh, authentic, Vietnamese food, uh, especially the pho and the bumbo bread, since uh, I grew up with that stuff. Um, so, with, you know, the 80s music, the kung fu movie, I grew up uh, when I lived in the refugee camp in Hong Kong in the eight, early 80s. Uh, I fell in love with all this cheesy kung fu movie. Back in the days, um, most of the fight in the kung fu movie take play at Google Shop. You know, I, I want to marry the the, the two together, I, I always think that they, they go together. And the 80s music, I, I love 80s music, it makes you feel good. Um, You're not worried that a kung fu fight starts no, out here? No, not here, not here, not so far. Maybe, give us time. <laughs> a little sake, a little wine, <laughs> a little kung fu. Yeah, so you can come here for a little fun, a little culture, great, authentic Vietnamese food, which they don't have a lot of those in this area. So this is the best one I've had in the Triangle by far. So we're going to start with lime juice, a pinch of mint, and a ginger simple syrup, and a couple dash of fitters. And we're going to add a lemon wedge and muddle it up. Add some bourbon, a bit of ice, and we'll stir it up. No problem. I'm drinking the ginger swizzle. It's the perfect drink for today. It's beautiful and sunny out. I'm getting a lot of ginger and mint. It's really fresh, really refreshing, and a hint of bourbon there at the end that makes it delicious. I'm drinking the herbarium, and I want to say it is sharp, refreshing, and malt. I know that sounds like a food uh, analogy, but it's delicious. It's very refreshing. So I'm in the kitchen with Kui, and the key to making a great pho is the broth. So. Tell us what we got here and what we're doing. So the process began we, when we bring the, uh, this is a beef bones. Uh, when we bring the bones in, we uh, clean it with salt, water, cold salt water, and we uh, would add ginger, um, uh, shallot, and yellow onion, and we spray a little bit of kosher salt and pepper on it, and we bake it at 500 degrees for probably 45 to an hour to, uh, to bring the flavor of the, uh, the bone. So when, after we bake them, we take it out, we rinse it off with cold water, we put it in a pot with, with all the spice, and then we put it in and we cook for about, uh, the minimum is 14 hours, but we go normally 16 to 18 hours for one batch. 18 hours to make one batch. So what are some of the spices we have here? Now, we, that you, you actually did, he bakes them off first to bring the flavor out, 
And we've got what? Some cinnamon. The two main ingredients that when somebody walk into a fur plate that they smell is the star anise and the cinnamon. These two is the key. That's a point. That's a fragrance that you get uh, when you walk into a fur place. Of course, you're gonna have uh, the clove, the, the uh, coriander seeds, and black pepper. Um, I put black pepper on every broth I cook because it's, it's beautiful when you come out. And then um, this is cardamom. Yep. And um, and that's it. All right. So we're gonna take this now. What? We take this now. We put them in a. Uh, a 24-quart pot, fill it up, and we slow cook them. So we're going to take a quick look at that, and then we'll come back and kind of show you how they prepare their fox. So when they cook the broth, because it's a timely procedure, they cook it in batches and different pots at different stages. So we initially started out with just the bones on the tray roasted that we were getting ready to start. And here we have a pot that's been brewing for 10 hours, and then the almost finished product, 14 hours. And you can notice every the richness and the darkness of, of the broth, how at each stage it just gets get richer and darker. And it's almost ready to eat. Okay, so now after the beef broth is cooked for about 24 hours, we're gonna start to plate it, put it together with the different noodles and products to make the house fly, which has some beef, the noodles, some beef tendon, there's some tripe in there, scallion, cilantro, red and yellow onions, and when it's all put together, this is what the finished product looks like. It's gonna be one tasty dish. We also have Pumbawe, another noodle dish made with pork paste instead of the beef. So ready, let's go eat. And the girls are actually out in the bar making some drinks, so we're about ready to go. Come on. So now, the food's all prepared, they got the cocktails, I got it paired up with the Asian beer, Yu beer, that I've never had before. We'll see how it goes with the food, so we're just gonna kinda dig in. We've got the cloth, which is these soup bowls, so we're just gonna kinda have a joint bowl and just all dig in the one pot at a time, and I'm gonna dig in here with a little, okay, I wanna get a little bit of that beef. The noodles are almost like secondary to the dish. The broth is so good. And it's interesting, when I talked to Gui, the owner, he was worried at first. He thought the broth that might be too strong for the American palate, and he didn't know if he should almost dummy it down. But his friends convinced him to go with the authentic recipes that he learned in Vietnam, and that's what he's done here, and he's got a great dish. The scallions in there, the onions, the different beef parts, and it makes for a great dish. So this is the Bun Bo Hue. And it's a really authentic dish. It actually comes from Hui's hometown. And I'm getting a lot of, it's a little heavier than the pho, but I'm getting a lot of lemongrass. Still really fresh taste, but there's actually a really nice kick on the end with some spices that are in there that you're not gonna get with the pho. Um, really love, it's pork based, and there's actually some fruit paste in here, which gives it a really, really cool flavor. So this is the spring roll, which is delicious. It's a great summer dish for me because it's it's light, it's fresh ingredients, and it's got things in it that I really like, like cucumber, shrimp, mint, all good stuff, all healthy and really tasty. I'll grab some tentacles. <laughs> a lot of people don't like the tentacles, but I'll do tentacles. I guess it's sweet chili sauce, so you got this, the sweet and the heat on top, tender, cooked perfectly. Mm -hmm. They have this sweet and spicy chili sauce that's on the squid that's really sweet at the beginning and then hits you with a really nice kick at the end that gives really, really great flavors that I'm digging. A really nice kick at the end. Gives you a little burn on the lips and everything. <laughs> it's the way we like it. But I can't stop eating it. Uh -huh. I'm like addicted. So the shrimp's been marinated in honey and fish sauce with a little bit of um, lemongrass in there, but you really can taste the lemongrass. I squeeze a little lime on it, a little coriander. Really tasty. The fish grilled perfectly. It's not overcooked where it's chewy or tough. But I really like that lemongrass flavor in there, yeah. You know, most places you go for wings, it's always the buffalo wing. 
This is a totally different wing. Like I said, it's not spicy at all. It's got the sweet. Let's do it. A little citrus, right? Yeah. A little citrus flavor. Well, you can taste that lemon, lemongrass again coming mm -hmm. through. The wing's nice and tender. It's got a nice crisp coating on it. It makes you just want to keep eating. <laughs> so that was a great meal. We had a wide variety of food, and it was really good. I loved every single thing on the menu. I feel like I could come here again and again, try something new. So many good flavors, so fresh, and everything's cooked just right. I thought everything was windy. <laughs> it is fresh and homey tasting, so it's, it doesn't taste like out of a box kind of cooking. It tastes like it came out of someone's kitchen. I loved it. That was great. And so don't forget to follow these people on us. We got Welcome to Rollywood over here and Meg here and there. Once again, for Three Hungry Guys, for all of us here, we're going to say ciao for now. See ya. <laughs>